Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In my last video, I discussed what is open telemetry and how to use open telemetry. And in this video, I am going to continue my discussion in open telemetry. I am going to show some of the added features of open telemetry. And also, I am going to use a web-based software called Honeycomb for logging the distributed trace. So I would highly encourage you go back and see my previous video on open telemetry. I'm going to provide the link in description because in this video, I'm going to start from where I left in terms of open telemetry. But just to give a very short introduction of what we did in my last video is that I used the NuGet packages for open telemetry and in the dependency injection container, I configured the open telemetry to instrument ASP.NET Core, SQL client, and HTTP client, and log the open telemetry into the console. And then in the controller, I just made a call to SQL server, and then a call to an outgoing HTTP service. And then I just logged both the trace into console using open telemetry. So in today's video, we are going to show how to use Honeycomb to log the distributed taste. Now, the reason is when we start logging into console, it is not that convenient to look into console, especially in production scenario. And in production scenario also, if we start logging the console log into something like Amazon CloudWatch, it is still going to be very inconvenient to look into the log and see what is going on because those logging system are not built for distributed tra tracing. Whereas product like Honeycomb is built for diagnosing distributed tracing. So that is why we are going to use Honeycomb. So this is the website of Honeycomb and you can use it for distributed tracing. Now, good thing about it is they have a free tier, which is decent enough for most of the cases, especially when we are trying to do some sort of POC to see if it is a good fit. And then if it is a good fit, we can buy the product. So for this example, I am going to use the free product and I already created an account using my Google. So we're going to start with that. And I already did some testing with some of the logs. So as you can see, as soon as it shows up, it comes with the request, the latency, and you can see there are some latency curve here. This is a latency heat map. And then also if there is an error rate, and then it shows some detail here, as well as recent request and stuff like that. Now we are going to go fast, add the Honeycomb open telemetry. And for that, what I have done is I added a new get package called honeycomb.opentelemetry. So if I go to the package manager, you can see in the installed, here I have Honeycomb open telemetry. Right now, as of recording this video, it is version 0.20 beta. Let's start using Honeycomb. So first thing we are going to do is we're just going to log this thing as is in Honeycomb. And then I'm going to use some, some of the advanced feature of open telemetry to log some extra detail. So to add Honeycomb, all we have to do here is we have to go and say, add honeycomb and honeycomb is part of honeycomb.opentelemetry in its space. So that's what I'm going to add. And then here you can use a uh, action, which is one of the parameter and it has few attributes that we can set. For example, service name is one attribute, which can be the service name that we declared above. And then the other important thing is the data set. Data set, consider data set as a bucket 
where everything will be logged. And I'm going to use test as the dataset name. And then finally, we have to pass the API key. And I have used the API key, which is currently in my configuration file. So I can just pick it up from the configuration value. That's about it. Once we just do this, now we are connected to Honeycomb and whatever distributed trace we are logging as a part of this application will go and get logged in Honeycomb. So let us run this application now and we will see the log in Honeycomb. So once the swagger loads up, we can go and try and execute this particular API. So I'm going to execute and it came back as success 200. Now we can go back to Honeycomb and we can click on this and see what we see. So here we are seeing a couple of entries. So first one, let's click here. This is all about Swagger. So it is tracing what the value in Swagger, which is kind of a little bit annoying because we don't want to log Swagger request. And we're going to see how we can disable that. And here we can see the API log. So we can see the main API has been called. Inside the API, we are making a call to the SQL server. As you can see, open telemetry.sql client. Then here it is making an HTTP call. You can see here it shows missing, but it logs the underlying call, which is making a call to the weather forecast, and it shows how much time it took. So as you can see, this way of representation of log is much more easier to visualize than in a console log. And as you can see, it has a proper hierarchy of what is the call structure. So this is just as is from the last video, but logging into Honeycomb. Now first, let's do one thing. Let's get rid of the log that is showing up from the Swagger. So for that, what we can do is we can just go here and we can say builder dot services. And then we can say configure. And for the configuration, we are used the ASP.NET Core inst instrumentation option. Currently, this namespace is not added, so I'm going to add opentelemetry.instrumentation.spnet core. And then here it takes options as an action. And we can set up the options here. So we can say options dot filter because we want to filter some of the item. So we can say option dot filter. And we're going to filter out some of the requests. So what do we want to filter out? We want to filter out anything which starts with swagger. So we can say return if the request dot path dot request dot path dot to string dot contains swagger. If swagger does not contain, then only it should execute, otherwise it should not. And also dot request dot path dot to string dot contains this should be contains and what I've seen with 
with swagger there is also a underscore framework file so i'll ignore that underscore framework also so this two will be ignored and now we will not see the swagger showing up but before we run this i want to add some more feature so that we can run it and show everything together so the other thing what we can do is right now we just logged whatever is coming default but if we want to add some extra feature for example we want to add some tag and tag can be let's say a customer account number and we want to see that as a part of the distributed trace so that thing we can do through using set tag feature and also we can use things like events so if we want to just log a particular item as a line item for mainly a readable message we can use something called an event and for setting tag or adding event what we used to do is we have to use the activity source and activity source is part of the diagnostics namespace so here what we can do is we can ask for activity source to be injected as part of system.diagnostics as I mentioned earlier and then here after we have this two let's say here we we add an activity so we can say activity source dot start activity and for the activity we can give it a name and let's say this is called parent activity now we have to use a using statement because this is a disposable object the activity object is a disposable object so we get the activity and then we can say activity dot set tag and for the tag it's a key value pair we can say it's a customer name and the name is xyz and let's say we also want to create a readable event so we can say add event and for the event we can give a event name but it is an event activity object so we can just give a new event activity activity event and if we use the dot net 10 syntax then we can just pass new and it will automatically understand that it is the activity event object and for the event we can say customer name captured for the event also as you can see activity event can have a timestamp and activity tag collection also so we can add tag to an activity event as well which will be part of the event now I'm not doing that because it's not necessary um, but you get the idea so now we added we created a parent activity inside of the API and then we set a tag and we added an event so if we run this now we should see this parent activity showing up in this in this trace so let's run this so once the swagger is ready we can go ahead and try this out so let's execute this and after this has been executed we can go back here and let's say we want to see for last 10 minutes now we can see this time we are not seeing any log from the swagger anymore we are just seeing the log which is single log which is mainly the log from the api call So if we get into the log, we can see that it is logging, though we are not seeing the parent activity yet. The reason for that is, though we are asking for this object, but we have not configured this object anywhere. So let me go back and let me add this to the dependency injection container. 
So for that, what I can do is I can do builder dot service dot at singleton, and for this one, at singleton, and here we can say new activity activity source, and activity source will pass the service name as the parameter, and for the activity source, we'll add the system dot diagnostic namespace. Now the activity source is configured in the dependency injection container. And then now if I run this and I test it, this time I should be able to see the parent activity and the tag as well as event showing up in the honeycomb. So once the swagger loads, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try out this method. And I'm going to go back to Honeycomb. And let's rerun the query. Okay, we see the new event here. And I can expand. So here we can see the parent activity showing up. And if I click on parent activity, and if I go down for the parent activity, I can see the customer name, which I added as a tag, the value as XYZ. And you can see this is the parent activity, which is the name of the activity. Now I'm not 100% sure why I am not seeing the, the event. I should have seen the event. Okay, let's try something else out now. What we can do is, just like we created parent activity, we can create a nested child activity. So anything which comes after this activity, if we create another one, it will act as a nested child activity. But after parent activity, let's do, do one thing. Let us call this also so that it creates a nested behavior. And then we can do using our child activity is equal to activity source dot start activity. And for this activity, we can say child activity. And after child activity also, we can just call this same database call again, just to show that the child activity also encapsulate this particular call. Because all we are trying to do with these activities is we're trying to encapsulate the calls which are getting executed after this. So now let's run again. And this time we should see a child activity inside of parent activity. And both the parent activity and child activity will have their individual call to the database. So once the swagger shows up, can go ahead and try to run this again. Now this time, let's go back to Honeycomb. Let's go back, let's rerun the query, and looks like this is showing up. And then we can just zoom into this and click on this. And if we click on this time, as you can see, the parent activity is collapsed now. And if I expand the parent, I can see the demo, which is the database call. And then below here, I can see the child activity and it also has the demo, which is again the database call. So this is how we can create, again, nested activity inside of our services. And this can be captured. The other thing what we can do is in the field, we can add tags. So the tag was customer name. So we can just search for the tag name and it's going to show up. And you can see here the customer name tag is showing XYZ in this case. So this is another cool feature in terms of visualization is that we can add tags here and it will show up in the honeycomb. So this is a feature that I like.
the one thing I wanted to see is why my event is not showing up just to make sure I'm doing it right should have worked let me just explicitly say activity event and try it out let's see if this works ideally it should but if it doesn't work I'm just going to show it in the console log at least that the event is getting captured and as I said currently the honeycomb NuGet package is in beta so I'm hoping some of these inconsistencies will be fixed once it is released so let me try and execute the swagger This time let's go back to honeycomb let's see the last 10 minutes you can see it here let's zoom it in and then let's click so we see the parent activity but I don't see the event so I'm not sure why the event is not logging but let's look into the console log and if we look into the console and if I go to the parent activity you can see that here activity events customer name captured so this event is showing up here whereas in other cases we don't have any events it is only the event for the parent activity because we specifically added this event which is missing in other cases but I'm not sure why it is not being captured in honeycomb uh, I'll try to debug it and see if I can find why it is not happening and if and if it works I will create another video just to show the event as a short video and upload but this is all I wanted to cover for today's video as you can see the honeycomb is really really powerful tool and by default for example if we go here by default it comes with the total number of requests that has happened it comes with the latency so we can see some of the latency in the heat map and then if there were errors and it comes total number of requests and the latency curve here as well as the recent log and we can actually like directly click here so for example this is the last request call if we directly click here it is going to take us to the trace view from here so we don't have to go and try to zoom in and go into specific thing we can just directly go here so you can see here we have these two and uh, all these directly from here So this is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.